Hello, this is Waylon Chow and welcome to this series on farming contracts. This video is part E on consideration. Remember there are three essential elements to form a contract. We will focus on the exchange of consideration. These are our dear friends, Sonia and Ahmed. Sonia has made an offer to sell her laptop for $700 to Ahmed. Uh, Ahmed has accepted. He says, yeah, sure, I'll take it for $700. So the exchange of consideration here was, uh, Sonia gave a promise to Ahmed to give ownership of her Apple laptop to Ahmed, and Ahmed, in exchange, promised to pay $700 to Sonia. So there is a valid exchange of consideration here. Now, if, if there is a lack of an exchange of consideration, if only one party uh, is making a promise or providing consideration, then that exchange of consideration requirement is not met. It's considered to be a gratuitous or one-sided promise, which is void for lack of consideration unless it is under seal. And we'll talk further about the significance of a seal later on in this video. Let's try to understand what is consideration, especially the legal meaning of consideration, which is very different than the general meaning of the same word. Consideration can be either giving or promising to give a benefit to someone else. So that benefit can be provided to the other party to the contract or to another person, a third party. Consideration can also be suffering or promising to suffer a detriment you know, to yourself. So if you're offering to give up smoking in exchange for someone paying you $1,000, giving up smoking is suffering a detriment and is considered to be valid consideration. Consideration has to have value. Now, th that is value that uh, the law considers to be valuable. Uh, so that includes obviously money, uh, goods, land, uh, or services, but it does not include love and affection or good feelings. The law does not consider those things to be valuable. Consideration does not need to be adequate. Whatever uh, whatever a party decide, parties decide to exchange uh, can be is enough to satisfy the exchange of consideration. A deal does not have to be considered fair. There, to illustrate this, there is something called the peppercorn uh, theory. So if I if I owned a horse and I wanted to sell it to you, and you offered uh, to provide me as payment for the horse a one tiny little peppercorn. Um, and if I was foolish enough to agree to that, then that deal would satisfy the requirement of an exchange of consideration, even though the value of that peppercorn is, is, is minuscule, it's far less than the economic value uh, of the whole horse. But, that, but the fact that the uh, peppercorn has some value is enough to satisfy the requirement of consideration. Hello again, Sonia and Ahmed. So Ahmed saying, oh man, my laptop broke and I can't afford to buy another one. Sonia says, I'm going to get a new laptop in a few days. Once I get it, I'll give you my old one. Ahmed says, that would be awesome. Thank you so much. A few days later, Sonia says to, to Ahmed, hey Ahmed, it's time to give my old laptop to my little brother. Sorry about that. So let's think about uh, why uh, there is no contract between Sonia and Ahmed, and also think about you know, how the deal between Sonia and Ahmed uh, may have been changed so that there was a binding contract between Sonia and Ahmed. With regard to the first question, why there is no contract between Sonia and Ahmed. So although Ahmed did accept Sonia's offer of the laptop, there was no exchange of consideration. Ahmed did not provide any consideration in exchange for Sonia's promise of the laptop. Therefore, a contract was not formed. With regard to the second question about how the deal between Sonia and Ahmed may have been changed so that there was a binding contract. If Ahmed had provided any amount of consideration, for example, a promise to pay even just $1, there would have been a binding contract because there would have been 
an exchange of consideration. Alternatively, if Sonia had put her promise in writing and signed it under seal, there would have been a binding contract. Past consideration is value given before a contract was contemplated. Past consideration cannot be used to support a contract. If an agreement is formed, but it does not mention a price, a court may find an implied promise to pay a reasonable price instead of finding a lack of consideration due to past consideration. So back to Sonia and Ahmed. You know, Ahmed is saying again that his laptop broke and he can't afford to buy another one. Sonia says, I'm going to get a new laptop in a few days. Since you helped me so much this semester to pass this course, I'll give you my old laptop. Ahmed says, that would be awesome. Thank you so much. So Sonia has given a promise to give ownership of her Apple laptop to Ahmed and Ahmed has, has given this past consideration of helping Sonia pass the course. So this is, this is assistance and help that Ahmed has already provided in the past before there was any contemplation, any discussion about the laptop, about giving the laptop to Ahmed. So that, that consideration given by Ahmed is past consideration and therefore it's not valid consideration. So therefore there is no exchange of consideration uh, in this scenario. Let's look at the issue of whether a pre-existing obligation can be used as consideration for a new contract. So if, if, if one party is already obligated to do something or to deliver something under a previous contract, can that obligation under the previous contract be used as consideration for a brand new contract? The summary of the law on this is is on this is on this chart. We'll look at each type of pre-existing obligation in further detail in the context of 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 the leading cases uh, on this issue. The first type of pre-existing obligation is a pre-existing contractual obligation owed to a third party. So, for example, you know, I will do for you what I already promised to do for someone else. So that is considered to be consideration for a new contract because that, that pre-existing or old obligation is considered to be a new benefit for the other party under the new contract. The second type of pre-existing obligation is where the obligation is owed to the same party. In other words, I'll perform our existing contract if you pay me $500 extra. With that type of pre-existing obligation, it is not considered to be consideration for the new contract because there is no new benefit being given to the other party. The leading decision on pre-existing contractual obligations owed to a third party is the case of Pao An and Lao Yi Long, or I call it the food chip case because it involves a corporation by that name. The plaintiff in the Food Chip case had entered into a, an agreement with Food Chip Corp for the purchase of shares. So the, the consideration exchange there was that Food Chip shares would be sold by the corporation to the plaintiff in exchange for the payment of a certain price for the shares and also a promise not to resell those shares or not to resell more than 60% of those shares within, within a year. Now, another agreement that the plaintiff entered into was an indemnification agreement with the majority shareholders of Food Chip Corp. So this is the agreement that, that was called into question as to whether or not it was a valid contract. Under that indemnification agreement, the, the majority shareholders, the defendants, had promised to, to indemnify for any losses that the plaintiff may suffer. So if the price of those shares had gone down below a certain level, the, the majority shareholders would have compensated the plaintiff for that loss under that, under that promise. In exchange for that promise, the consideration provided by the plaintiff to the majority shareholders was a promise not to resell more than 60% of the shares 
within a year. So it was the exact same promise that the plaintiff had made to, to Food Chip Corporation under the other agreement, the agreement for the purchase of the share. So the issue was, you know, is that promise to, to not, sorry, not to resell more than 60% within a year made to the majority shareholders, is that considered to be valid consideration? Because it was a pre-existing contractual obligation that the plaintiff already had to someone else, which was the, the corporation. And the court there found that 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 promise was valid consideration, that this previous promise is a new benefit for the majority shareholders under the indemnification agreement, and therefore it is valid consideration. The leading decision involving pre-existing contractual obligation owed to the same party is the case of Gilbert Steele and University Construction, which is a decision of the Ontario Court of Appeal. In that case, we have, we have two, two agreements, and they both involve the same parties. One party, the first party, uh, which is the plaintiff, is Gilbert Steele, and the second party is University Construction. Gilbert Steele was a supplier of steel for, for construction, and University Construction was the, the, the general contractor. So agreement number one between, between those, these two parties involved a promise by university construction to pay a set price for for the supply of steel by gilbert steel so gilbert steel had promised to supply several shipments of steel at that set price now as after a, a few shipments had been made the the world price of steel had gone up so gilbert steel went back to university construction and told them about the increase in the price of steel and to see if university construction would be willing to pay a higher price for the remaining shipments of steel. So that led to agreement number two between Gilbert Steel and university construction. Under agreement number two, university construction had agreed to pay an additional amount for, for the steel. And that, and that additional amount for, was, for the, uh, was for Gilbert Steel to supply the remaining shipments as per the original agreement, agreement number one. The court found that that promise to supply the remaining shipments under agreement number two was not valid consideration because, because that promise had already been made under agreement number one and that university construction did not receive any new benefit from that, from that promise to supply the remaining shipments. And therefore, that second contract, agreement number two, is void for lack of consideration. The situation involving a promise to forgive debt also involves an issue regarding consideration. You know, for example, if you owe me $500 and you tell me that you, you will have a lot of difficulty paying me back since you lost your job, and I agree, I agree that I agree to forgive your debt if you pay me uh, $200, then that is a promise to discharge debt upon upon part payment. The, the legal problem there is that the promise to discharge a debt is unenforceable because no new consideration is being provided by the debtor. So in effect, I am discharging $300 of your debt in exchange for nothing from you. So there is no, there is no exchange of consideration. Now the, the solution to that legal problem is well, you know, one of three possible solutions. If, if the situation occurs in, in Ontario, the, there is a piece of legislation called the Ontario Mercantile Law Amendment Act, which says that you can have a valid contract to accept part payment to fully discharge a debt obligation, even though there is no new consideration. So that legislation essentially changes the common law position that there is no agreement. So the legislation overrides the, the common law uh, position. Now for, for other provinces in Canada that don't have the equivalent of a Mercantile Law Amendment Act, the other, the other way of making uh, a promise to discharge debt a, an enforceable contract is, is to make that promise uh, under, under seal. And we'll talk about uh, a seal on the next slide. 
And a third, a third way of getting around this problem is, is to have the debtor uh, promise to provide some kind of new benefit in exchange for the forgiveness of the debt. So if, if, if you promise to pay me 200 and I'll forgive you the remaining 300, but in addition, you promise to pay me that 200 sooner uh, than, than, than the, the usual deadline, than the required deadline, then you are giving me a new benefit, which is the benefit of early payment. And there is an exchange of consideration, which makes it into a, an enforceable contract. So we know that a one-sided promise, where one party is making a promise to the other and the other party is not giving anything in exchange, a one-sided promise lacks an exchange of consideration and therefore is not an enforceable contract. Those one-sided promises can be made into enforceable contracts by one of two ways, even though there is no exchange of consideration. The first way is by, by using a seal, and the second way is under the legal doctrine of promissory estoppel. Uh, which, by the way, is not covered in this course, so you're not responsible for that. So we'll not, we won't talk about that any further. Now, what what is this seal? A, spe a seal is a special mark on a written contract to indicate a party's intention to be bound by the terms of the contract. So what it, it would involve is simply the person who's making that one-sided promise you know, put that in writing and sign it and put a special red sticker on it. So I call it a magic sticker. So the effect of that magic sticker is to make that one-sided promise into a legally binding, legally binding contract.